want you to see my office. But there's one problem. What's that? I need my kitchen. Yeah, so you need my office table? Yeah, I need your table for my kitchen. Well, I guess it's time to close up the office. In this episode, we cover a turtleback trailer event, share a great foodie find in one of our favorite campsites ever, announce our newest sponsor, it's a big one, and we visit Overland Journal headquarters, let you know what we're doing there, and visit one of the last steel dams in America. We're at the event here at Turtleback and vehicles are starting to show up. There are families checking things out. Hopefully you're following Wandering Rubicon Overland, also known as Mr. Ken, one of the owners of Turtleback. After such a long hiatus from events, it was really nice just to gather with other people with similar passions here at Turtleback Trailers. So good to see so many smiling faces. And here's our rig on display here at Turtleback. These are the set of Max Tracks that we were given to give away Set up a little display. Our event at Turtleback was a huge success. There was probably 40 to 50 rigs, and I guess about 100 people showed up, and it was just so awesome to be back with our community. You know, Brittany and I really love participating in events because we get to establish relationships with other people with similar passions. We get to meet with vendors. Um, who have partnered with us for our global journey, and we get to showcase a lot of the products that we use as full-time overlanders. Uh, so many people are weekend warriors, or they go out for a week at a time, and they don't actually use the same type of gear that we use or carry as much gear as we use. So it's really nice to be able to show them the quality and durability of the type of things that we use and to give them some instruction on it. And you can make it into a hole. You can take the sand out from underneath the tires. Instead of trying to dig with it, you can literally just make it a hole. They make mounts for the exterior of your vehicle, don't they? They do. That's why we're just doing it. What are you drawing? A big city. Speaking of relationships we built, our friend, handsome anchor Brian, Beth, and their family are dear friends of ours. We had never camped with them, but right after Turtleback, we did. Which wood is this? I don't know, baby. Okay, I'm going to look at the map because I don't think we want this trail, but let me double check. Roger that. I'm right behind you, so if you need to back up, let me know. Copy that. I think we want the next one. I just have a coordinates and not like a route to get where he, his coordinates are. And whatever daddy's gear turns into, my gear does the same. Turns into the same gear because daddy like, pulls the plug back and my gear does where his gear does. You match daddy's gear? Do you have some kind of gauge that tells you when it's getting too hot? Or do, can it just explode out of nowhere? When I say explode, I mean it gets into an even better gear when I say it's exploding. Oh. Brian led us up this trail for about an hour, and he didn't know where we were going, and I didn't either, but check this out. So these are called Arizona Pinstripes. And you can kind of see where it got its name. We are going to have all kinds of pinstripes on the side of Guardian. Not only have we been going through trees and getting the crap beat out of us, both driver and passenger side, but there are some rock gardens that we've been going through. There's some fairly good sized boulders on either side. And we are doing our best to navigate through them as well. This is one of many. Some loose rock. What? 
This might have been a huge waste of time. So we're headed back down now uh, to go back to the pavement and Brian found a shortcut. So this is FR45. It seems a lot easier than the last one we're on. The views are really scenic and it looks like it's a shortcut. We found the gate, we knew the shortcut was correct. So we were really happy about that. After about an hour going down the wrong trail to the wrong coordinates, we got the right coordinates and headed back to the pavement. So we've made it back to the pavement and Brian says that we've only got about five miles up this road, five or six miles up this road. And then apparently about two minutes off road to get to the campsite. We'll see how that goes. But it doesn't matter because we're having a great time and uh, this is what it's all about exploring new places and checking out new things we're having a good time and not only that it's 93 degrees right now so anytime we're in the jeep with a little bit of ac is a little bit less time that we'll be outside in this sweltering heat we are hoping to go up a little bit higher in elevation maybe knock off one or two degrees but uh, by this evening it should be uh, a little bit nicer uh, maybe it might drop down to i don't know 85, 80. After all that rigmarole, we finally made it to our campsite and it was at about 5,000 feet of elevation, which was really nice because that dropped down the temperatures for us and it was time to set camp and have some fun. Tell you about today. Today was a good day. The event was awesome. It was great to meet everybody. I didn't sleep very well last night, so I'm feeling pretty tired. And I wish we hadn't spent so much time off road because I feel like it took away from time with friends. So I'm gonna make dinner now. What are we having? Hamburgers. Yay. We had dinner and Brittany is putting Caspian to sleep and we're hanging out with our friends, Brian and Beth and their kids. And we're next to this creek. We're at this campsite. It's kind of cool, but it's really, really hard to get level here. may not look like it, but there are literally no level spots. Brian did some magic with his turtleback trailer, and we set up on some go treads. Thank you, go treads. Um, over kind of like a little V in the ravine. I'll try and get it on camera so you can see it. Well, we managed to get level, although we had to shorten... The length of our ladder but it's kind of cool because we're really close to this creek that's down here and the kids have been playing in the creek and it's cool which is really nice because it was 97 degrees when we left Chandler and it was probably 82 degrees when we arrived here and it's probably dropped now into the upper 60s so it's really really nice camping weather for the month of April in this area. And we're really thankful for that. So we're just gonna hang out with our friends tonight and have a good time. And uh, yeah, this is our campsite. After so much time on the trail, we didn't really get to spend too much time with Brian and Beth, which was a huge bummer because they're a great family. But the next day was Easter. We told them we were leaving early in the morning. Well, it's Easter morning. We just left Brian, Beth, and their kids uh, up here in the Tonto National Forest near Roosevelt Lake. And we are headed towards Anthem or somewhere in North Phoenix where we found an outdoor service to celebrate Easter. And we're really excited about it. Because of COVID, it had been 14 months since we had gone to church. But whatever we do, that is fun. After our Easter service this morning, we decided to head to Prescott, Arizona again, uh, simply because it's supposed to be a lot cooler up there and we really enjoyed our time. Uh, we're taking the highway up to Prescott, which we haven't done before, because uh, last time we took Senator Highway, which is an off-road trail. But this time, I think we're uh, gonna get there a little quicker. So that's what we're doing. We're hoping to find a campground. Actually, we're hoping to do a little bit of a reset. Uh, it would be nice to find some showers and a place to do laundry and all that type of stuff. So we'll see what happens. If The good news is there's plenty of places to wild camp up near Prescott. So if they don't have a campground available to us that has showers, we'll still be able to find a spot to stay in and maybe we'll just have to take showers in the creek. We'll see how things go. 
So we're ready for showers. We get to the campground and it is absolutely packed. We don't know what's going on. They had had their own Easter service is what happened. So it turns out the campground is closed. So we're not sure where we're gonna go, but we're gonna start by going to lunch. So upon a recommendation from our friend Matt Scott, we are headed to the Lazy G Brew House. Uh, he said it's good stuff. We took his other recommendation, really liked it, and we're back in Prescott, so we figured we'd try this one for lunch today. I will go up the normal way. I'm not going to go up that way. No tea. Hello. Hi. Hi there. How are you? Doing well. Thank you. Good. Three of you? Yes. Okay. Inside or outside? I'm this is called the brew house poutine it's our first appetizer that we're having here it looks amazing the food at lazy g was incredible i had a steak sandwich dip and Brittany had a reuben that was out of this world then we headed off to our campsite so we are at our campsite in prescott national forest and Brittany and caspian have just walked down to the water i'm going to try and join them down there All right, here we are. Here's Brittany and Caspian at the waterfall. Daddy gets what? What, baby? This is all shallow. I can walk through it. You can walk through all that? Yeah. Okay, baby. Look at that. What do you think, Brittany? Oh, that's awesome. Do it. Now we do have a four-year-old and we couldn't forget it was Easter. So even though we were in the woods, we had to do a little something special. So while I distracted Caspian, the Easter Bunny had fun. It says, Happy Easter Bunny Caspian. Happy Easter Bunny Caspian? What do you think that means? The Easter Bunny time. Are we going to go look for what he left for you? Yeah. Should we go? Yep. Okay, let's go down the ladder. It's a hunt with the Easter Bunny. Oh, Mommy! Hey, is... wait a minute. How do you think the Easter Bunny found you way up here, Caspian? I do not know. Hmm. Okay, go, go. <laughs> Should you go look? Yep. This way. He put it under Guardian's tire? <laughs> he had it right behind the truck. Wait, guys! What? Oh, look at that. <laughs> right in between there. Mm. Oh, Daddy, see this stuff? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you should. Can you believe the Easter Bunny came all the way out here to the Prescott Forest? Mommy! Come over here, then. Mommy, look at this. Look right here. Whoa, it's so cute. Come on, Mommy. Look right here. He hid it right behind that stone. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa, good eyes. You better keep looking. The Easter Bunny likes bright colors. So where on Guardian are there some bright colors? Maybe near the front, Caspian. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Wow! <laughs> Say Happy Easter! We just found out today that uh, Overland Journal is going to be featuring us on their podcast. Uh, we're recording it this Thursday. I don't know when it'll show up, but uh, wow, that's really humbling and encouraging because we are huge fans of Overland Journal, Overland International, pretty much anything they put their hands on. And uh, just to be on their podcast, to be talking about our upcoming global trip. Uh, wow. So we're leaving one of our favorite camp spots of all time here in Prescott, and we are heading into Prescott. 
and today we have a very busy day. We are gonna go in and take some showers and do some laundry. We have to do some grocery shopping today. And I've got a call with Red Arc and possibly a call with Rigid Industries about our global build. And we're probably gonna be receiving some information from the folks at Overland Journal. So Eric, yes. earlier today you said that we were going to have a call with Red Arc. Yes, we did. I would like an update. You'd like an update. So actually I had a conference call with Ryan, who's the Western Regional Sales Manager for the United States, and Marion, who is like their exporting expert person in Adelaide, Australia, at their headquarters, and Red Arc has just become our latest gear sponsor for our global trip. Woot woot! Yeah, and here's my office where we did the conference call. I want you to see my office. We have my chair and my computer and my phone and we have our internet. We have our aim tom that's powering everything. And uh, not a bad office setup, considering. But there's one problem. What's that? I need my kitchen. Yeah, so you need my office table? Yeah, I need your table for my kitchen. Well, I guess it's time to close up the office. What do you have, Caspian? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm wasting all the money. This, mommy, I'm wasting all the money. It's out of control. Wow, it's digging a hole. Look at that. Wow, Caspian. That's crazy. So today's an important day for us. Uh, we got invited by the group over at Overland International, Overland Journal, to be on their podcast. Yay! So we're really excited about that. Uh, so we're headed into Prescott this morning, but first, coffee. Where, where do you want to go, Brittany? I want to go to the county seat. So if you ever go to Prescott, apparently Brittany says the county seat is the place to go for coffee. You want to know a secret? When I came here to work the other day, you want to know what I got to order? Yes. Yeah. Carrot cake! <laughs> We're carrot cake twins! <laughs> we like our carrot cake, don't we? Yes! Yeah. You remember that time I wanted to order carrot cake? I do remember, it was like two seconds ago. And I got my dream. You did get your dream. After our coffee and carrot cake, we headed to the podcast taping location. Not going to lie, Brittany and I were a little bit nervous because we have so much respect for the team at Overland Journal, but we were on our way. So we've just arrived at Overland International Headquarters here in Prescott, Arizona, and we are getting ready to do the podcast inside here with the team. Hey, good morning. Caspian just bolted in and said, here I am. Hey, good morning, Scott. I'm recording just so you know. <laughs> That's okay. Good morning. What's up, man? How are you? Uh, that's a pretty awesome truck. That thing is super. Look at that green, too. It looks fast. That thing looks crazy fast. Definitely faster than my Land Rover. <laughs> Speeding? I will. That one's speeding and the other one's speeding? Yep, we're good. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Paula. 
Hello and welcome to the Overland Journal Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Brady. My co-host, Matt Scott, is actually bringing in a container filled with goodies from Australia, so he's not with us this morning. Uh, but today I have a, a very cool couple and their son in the studio. We've got Eric and Brittany Highland from The Hourless Life. And their son, Caspian, is here in the studio as, as well. He may uh, join us at some point uh, during, during the recording, which is really fun. So it's great to have you guys with us today. Thank you so much for taking the time. After our time with Scott and the Overland Journal team, which was awesome, we went back to camp. And this is just a day in the life. We've got our camp wood for the fire later, kitchen set up, Caspian's down there playing with rocks in the water. And what's Brittany doing? Brittany is oxy-cleaning his pants. I think he knelt in some oil at Overland Journal today. Ah, so it's Overland Journal's fault. Definitely. So Overland Journal, you owe us a pair of kid-sized pants size what? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> How did I do that? that was big. So, what do you think is going to happen with those pants, Brittany? I think they're not salvageable, so it's time for wine. <laughs> Good morning. So, we've been traveling full time in the United States for more than seven years now, and this area of the Prescott National Forest has got to be our favorite place to camp. And I don't know if you can hear, but Caspian's calling me from the tent, so I guess I better run. Headed up to a place that was recommended to us by Brian Shaw of MHQ in Chandler. He said he used to take his kids up here. It's called the Ashford Bainbridge Steel Dam. And I haven't really done too much research on it, but apparently it's like the only remaining steel dam in the United States. So it's kind of a one of a kind thing. It's right off of I-40 near the town of Ashworth. And we followed Google Maps, which you should never do by the way. I don't know what this sign says. It looks pretty ominous, but. <laughs> it looks like a wooden board to me. Maybe it said keep out. Maybe it used to. Or maybe it said landmines. Or maybe it said something other than it's catastrophic. Either way, we're taking this road and we are hopefully going to find this dam. So we'll see. Either way, it's a fun adventure. You never know what we're going to find around the bend. The trail that led us down to the steel dam started out wide, got a little bit narrower, a little rockier, a little more off camber, and a little more sketchy. But eventually, we made it all the way to the bottom of the trail. So we want to thank our friend Brian Shaw. This was kind of a little crazy trail that took us down here. I don't know if we were supposed to drive it or if it was an ATV trail, but there's no signs, no markings. But apparently this is one of the last remaining steel dams that was built in the United States. So we're gonna kind of walk around and take a look while we're here. I did manage to get Guardian turned around over here. So we're facing back up the trail and we'll take that trail back up when we are done exploring. Caspian, you ready to go to explore? Well, we're gonna go look and see what it says, okay? I might get my another badge here. Well, this isn't a national park unit, baby, although it maybe should be. So this sign that's falling down here says the Arizona Society of Civil Engineers State Historical Civil Engineering Landmark 2000. The Ash Fork Bainbridge Steel Dam, designated by the Arizona Society of Civil Engineers, ASCE, November 5th, 1995. Wait, Mommy! What, baby? what are you doing? Stay here. Why? I want to check it out. But not safe. Baby, that's enough, babe. Brittany is the perfect companion to take around the world because she's pretty much fearless. I got nervous, Caspian got nervous, 
She relented and walked back. Why are we going down here? So we can see the dam, baby. What dam? This big metal thing. This is a dam. What? So people built this to stop the water. Why did they want to stop the water? Well, I think they probably used it for power. I don't know enough about steel dams, son. What's a dam? A dam, remember like what you were building in the river to stop the river? Mm -hmm. Well, this is what other people built to stop this one. What are we going to do? We're just looking at it, baby. Not many people get to see this. And Mr. Brian, do you remember Mr. Brian? Mm -hmm. He said that this was the last steel dam in the United States. So someday these aren't even going to be around anymore, son. After exploring the dam, we sat down for a little bit of lunch before we got headed back out on the trail. So I asked Brittany to find us a spot uh, to camp for tonight. She didn't want to drive too far today, so she found a spot apparently outside of Seligman, Arizona. We've only got about three miles more of this to get to the spot. I think that's where we're going to spend the night. We got the tent set up, and Brittany and I put out our Rhino Rack Batwing awning. And so you can see all the shade that that's providing already for us. Caspian's going to have a little nap. Brittany and I are going to set up camp, get our chairs and everything set up. And so that's what's happening right now. We got here kind of early. I don't normally like to arrive at camp until around 3.30. Um, just because of the heat of the day and that type of thing. But Brittany said that she was done driving. She's like, Well, I was driving, but she was done being in the car. She wanted to uh, take a break and not have as long of a drive today. So we found this spot. It's actually pretty nice. It's quiet. It's a lot of washboard road to get here, but it uh, ended up being a decent spot. Woke up this morning just outside of Seligman, out here in the state trust land area. We saw some, yeah, there's some donkeys. We are headed today towards Joshua Tree National Park, which will be Caspian's 31st National Park. And uh, it's about four hours away, so we got an early start. It was a brisk morning, about 37 degrees uh, this morning, 34 when we woke up. But we packed up everything last night because we knew it was going to be a cold morning, so it made getting on the road a little bit easier this morning and uh, headed off for a day of adventure. I think that it's going to be really fun. So we are on the drive to Joshua Tree National Park and this is going to be a special park for us because none of us have ever been to Joshua Tree. So we are taking I-40 West right now and it says that we should be there in about three hours. We're really excited. This will be Caspian's 31st National Park here in the United States. And uh, one more after that, he'll be halfway there to all 63. Unless, of course, they add some more, which wouldn't hurt our feelings any. Uh, but anyway, it's been a good day. We stopped and had a little breakfast uh, in Kingman. And now we've got about three more hours to go. We hope you've been enjoying our U.S. Overlanding series. If you haven't gone back and watched our other videos, please do so. And our next video will be all about Joshua Tree National Park, which, by the way, was incredible. Please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment. We love to get to know our community. Thanks so much for watching.